All right, good morning. It is uh, the morning of our flight. We're just going to take a short cross country from Tamiami to Pompano. It's uh, 5.30 in the morning and we're going to be departing by about 10. So it's just a good idea to get an idea of what we can expect in the way of weather. Um, so I'll just show you some of the tools I use. There are lots of different options out there. These are just a few that that I like. Um, so first thing is later later we'll be getting a uh, a flight briefing from uh, Lockheed Martin Flight Services, which is the contractor for the FAA for um, pilot briefings. And I was just curious um, about how early, how much before your flight you can you should take a standard briefing as opposed to a um, outlook briefing. And so I googled standard briefing it brought up standard briefing FAA SS and the reason I'm just showing this is just for you to get a good overview it's the first uh, hit um, takes you to an FAA site and it's uh, something probably out of the AIM um, and it just goes through what the briefer needs to give you a briefing your uh, type of flight VFR, FR, your aircraft number or your name type departure airport you don't have to really have an airplane. You don't have to really have um, a um, flight plan. You can do this just for an exercise, just for practice. Uh, you just give them your name. You know, give them, tell them you're in a Cessna 172 or whatever you want to tell them you're in. All right, we'll get to that in a minute. So the first thing, though, as far as weather, is we're going to get a big overview. Um, I don't watch TV, and I'm not going to look at TV weather. So I like. Um, I just installed Skype, so we need to enable the browser add-on. Um, so I like Wonderground, and all of these sites uh, that have anything that's uh, specific to your location, they'll key off your IP address and then guess at your location. Miami, Florida is accurate, but we're gonna get a, we're gonna drill down even more. All right, first thing I like to do in in um, Wonderground is I like to look at the big map. For the fronts, for any uh, weather activity, any radar activity. And you can see, um, again, I'm no radar or weather expert. Uh, this is a subject that I'm learning myself. But we have uh, some highs here. And you got, uh, uh, you've got this uh, massive cold air heading this way. You've got some warm air heading this way. I uh, looked last night, um, and this, was a, this front was occluded, but it looks like they're no longer showing it as occluded showing it it's uh, moving now now see for instance this is um, an occluded front um, it's colored extreme no that'd be weather I don't know what this uh, see again this is some you know here's a, a classic occluded front here here I'm no, not sure what this means that uh, purple for instance, see it's here it shows um, Cold fronts, blue, war fronts, red, stationary fronts, alternating blue and red. So, oh, here we go. Occluded. Okay. Uh, a stationary versus occluded. All right. They're making a uh, distinction between a stationary front and an occluded front. So these are stationary fronts, and this is an actual occluded front. But you see down here in South Florida, we're um, currently experiencing some very warm weather. Um, the, it's probably this massive air here. It's pushing up. And uh, you know, right now temperatures are in the highs in the 80s here in uh, March, beginning of March. Very common weather for us here in Florida. And just the normal clouds that when you know the normal weather we'll see in Florida. When it gets cold, when the cold air moves in, it's beautiful. But in the warm air, you know, we get a lot of clouds. All right, uh, so we see there's nothing really nasty looking as far as the front frontal activity or the radar. Um, now the other thing I want to show you on Wonderground that I like a lot, one reason I go to it, is the extended forecasts. 
which is not really a factor for us today because uh, we don't need an extended forecast for a flight in five hours. But I also have a flight tomorrow, or maybe you have a flight four or five days out. So what's cool here is you can put any airport at all, even a small one, even a grass strip. But we'll put KTMB, and you see it brings it up in the drop down, KTMB Florida. I don't think you have to press search. I think it actually, uh, when, once you click on that link, it's searching. And give it a second because it's going to load some ads, and so that uh, ties up the browser for a second. All right, so basically we got our current weather. It's clear. The sun's not up yet. Um, you know, temperature, wind, and here, you know, here in Florida during the night we have nice weather, and we have low winds, and then uh, later in the day we're gonna we're gonna get some winds and some weather. Um, now what I especially like is scrolling down here to the forecast. This is this is the value of uh, Wonderground to me is these these daily forecasts for 10 days out. So if you had a flight on Tuesday, click there, you get an idea of the um, conditions you can expect, your, your, your highs and lows uh, throughout the day, hour by hour, six hours by six hours. But again, starting with a relative, you know, winds at nine, which, uh, and then moving up during the day to uh, closer to 20 knot winds, uh, trans precipitation, the cloud cover. But let's look at today. Um, again, right now, winds are nine. By noon at 13, and they're dropping down to six in the evening. So a pretty, pretty calm day. And chance of precip only 10, so that's that's pretty uh, pretty uh, nice. Uh, tomorrow a little bit more uh, rain expected. Winds are picking up in the, again in the midday. Chance of precips 30 to 40. Chance of rain. Not a day that you cannot fly on, uh, but it's not a clear sky, sunny weather day. That's tomorrow. So I have a flight tomorrow with a friend. Today I'm I'm flying by myself somewhere. So that's uh, what I use Wonderground for. Next one we can take a look at is, of course, aviationweather.gov. Aviationweather.gov is, uh, everything is there. That's the NOAA site. Uh, it's a great site. It's, it's almost a little bit too much information. Um, what I generally, when I come over here, I'm going to look at the radar. You can look at the United States radar to get the, um, the overview of the entire country. Again, we see that same band that we saw on the Wonderground, and again we see you see you got some winds here, you know, showing some winds, I guess. Um, and then also we see that down here in uh, down here in South Florida, there's nothing showing on radar. So we'll go to site radar to get a specific look at where we're going. Miami is AMX. Ah, beautiful right now. You can go enhance. I'm not sure what the difference is, but the main thing uh, you, I like to look at, and again, right now there's not a lot there, is I'll grab a loop. Grab a composite loop. That's your. Um, those are your returns, top to bottom. As the radar scans, it scans in different uh, elevations, like maybe five degrees, starting at five degrees and going up, up, up until it's scanning maybe I don't know six, uh, forty-five degrees up. So right now. This is probably just some ground clutter. Um, so right now, nothing. Right now, skies are clear. As far as what you're actually going to be flying in, for for us, <laughs> I'm have to bring my dog inside. So uh, let me pause this a sec. Okay, I brought my dog in. It's uh, not even six o'clock in the morning, and she found something to bark at out there. So I can't have that. So uh, okay, so. Here at uh, aviationweather.gov, uh, we check our radar. We're, we're looking at a uh, base, um, a base return on a loop. A base is the lowest elevation that the radar um, scans at. It's the one that's going to pick up the ground clutter. And uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I'm just curious the difference between these two. Hmm. I guess this is just random returns here. Okay, but base shows uh, what we can expect flying along at 2,000 feet. And remember always, of course, that radar only shows precipitation. It doesn't show cloud cover. It doesn't show ceilings. Other thing we can look at at um, uh, 
this uh, website, Aviation Weather, are all your TAFs and METARs. Very easy to get a whole bunch of them at once, which is handy. Uh, I go down here to where it says um, METARs, and, I, and it's the observation, this one. And we're going to get TAFs and METARs for uh, Tamiami, for Pompano, that's not Pompano, Pompano, and we're going to get one for FXE because there's no TAF at Pompano, it's not that big of an airport. We're going to get them raw, they're not that hard to read. You get them translated, and it'll translate them to you. Uh, the TAFs and METARs in the most recent. All right. So we'll take a quick look at the uh, the METARs right now. The, even though that's not really that applicable, we're not leaving for you know five hours. Um, but right now, it's an automated return. Um, that's because the uh, the weather guys are not there till later in the day. Everything's on automatic right now. Another thing about these automatic things is you can call them up. I have uh, the ones I commonly use, place I commonly go. I have on my uh, my phone, my cell phone. I just dial them up and I can listen to the weather at the airport while I'm driving or whatever. All right, uh, the winds are light, 1703, 10, mi 10 miles visibility, clear skies, uh, 22 temperature, 20 dew point. Uh, not a lot of spread there. Um, altimeter, 29 or 9 or 4. Remarks, and I forget what some of these remarks mean. I know. Um, I think this has to do with the device that's being used. This is, of course, your sea level pressure in millibars. One zero, what is it? One zero zero one. I don't know. I don't look. I don't use millibars too much. <laughs> this is uh, your temperature to tense. So it's twenty two point two and twenty point zero on the dew point. Uh, when we look at our um, our tasks, our forecasts, one thing we can take a look at is uh, what period. Uh, when was this issued? So this was issued. I think they're issued every six hours, pretty sure. This look, yeah, because the last ones I saw were uh, zero, zero. So um, this one is from 1 a.m. So it's uh, right now it's five hours old. So in a couple hours, we'll get a new one. And uh, so we're talking starting at 1 a.m., of course, the wind's light. But then picking up, let's say, at 8 o'clock in the morning, which is uh, more of interest to me, winds are picking up 15 gusting 18. Not a lot of clouds, good good visibility, a few clouds, 3,000. Um, picking up at, uh, what is this, 2 two o'clock, 5 o'clock. Let's see, it's 5, no, it's actually noon. That would be at noon. Uh, again, about the same, a little stiffer, a little stiffer on the wind. So it's going to be a windy day out there. And the winds, this is important, you know, uh, for your runway selection, is the winds are 170 at... Um, 15 gusts and 21. Pretty stiff little wind. Pompano right now, again, we're not leaving for five hours, so this is kind of not an important information for us. Similar weather. Uh, FXE, we're going to look at the, the tab for FXE. Covers the same period uh, from 0600 Zulu, 0600 Zulu, starting, uh, so that's 1 o'clock. Same kind of an idea. 8 o'clock, we're expecting the winds to freshen. And, um, at, uh, I always have to think these things through. Du, 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 du. It's new. Uh, a, a little bit more in the winds. Almost identical. These two are identical, really. Interesting. We can expect some wind. Uh, the only difference here is the one nine or zero on the wind. So one thing we're going to want to do is we're going to know what runways we have available, Pompano, to deal with this wind because we certainly don't want to grab a direct crosswind at 21 uh, knots. So the next thing we're going to take a look at, we're going to take a look at the uh, places we're going. TMB, I use AirNav. If I put in KTMB, it should show it up in my favorites. Yeah, KTMB. And we can make another one for, for Pompano. KTMB. I don't, have, I don't have a lot of these saved in my favorites. So let's just make this one Pompano. EMP. You know, there's lots of different tools out there that do the same thing. You kind of get used to using one. That's what you use. I know there's a lot of different places you can include airports. I um, I like AirNav. 
so it has all your location information, your uh, airport information, if it's public or private, if it has landing fees, it'll show up. It's got all your frequencies. Now, what I was saying, you can always call the ASOS. Here's the phone number, 305-235-1332. And um, here's some ASOS that are in an AWOS that's nearby. All right, and um, services, location, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, nearby um, VORs, and then you got your runway information, which is um, what we're going to be looking at. I already know the runways at uh, Tamiami very well. Uh, we can get a download a uh, airport diagram, so we have the taxiways. You should always have an airport diagram when you're taxiing on a runway on a on an airport property. And again, we have uh, TAFs and METARs. Uh, it brings up uh, your airport, and it also brings up some stuff in the area, so that's good. You can kind of look around a little bit, see if there's anything you need to know about. You can also, uh, for IFR, oh, you know what this is? This is the automatic call with, uh, I just installed Skype on this computer. I've had a Skype account many, many years, but I just don't use it. So, you know, you can click here now, and... Um, we can just dial that number. Yeah, I want to call it because that's why I clicked it. 180 at zero 03. Visibility uh, no. 1 0. Sky condition Q 5500. Temperature 2 2 Celsius. Dew point 2 0 Celsius. Altimeter 2 9 9 5. Remarks. Time zero four zero zero zero. Time in the is terminating class Delta services. Yeah. Class Echo airspace now in effect. The local mm -hmm. airport advisory mm -hmm. frequency. That's what I want. Okay. That's cool. So you put those numbers into your cell phone, and as you're driving to the airport, you can you can give it a call and, and see if something changes, especially if you have a, a long ride to get over there. Alrighty, so um, the main one we want to look at though is Pompano because we're going up, I mean even even Tamiami we have to be cognizant of these winds which are pretty windy and uh, they're not using this runway so much, they're mostly using their east-west runway so coming back we might have a little bit of a problem. Worst come to worst we'll land it at uh, X, X51 and just park it there until the winds die down, you know, I don't know, do what we need to do. X-51 has a north-south, uh, this is X-51 Homestead, this is uh, the north-south runway here, 4,000 feet, there's an east-west runway here, there's a grass strip here, so we could, you know, we could get it down at Homestead and, and wait for the winds to come down, or just leave it there, tie down for the night and figure out some way to get home, get back and get it the next day. All right, so... Sorry, got distracted. All right, looking at Pompano, I happen to know there's a, a runway that's a little bit. Uh, if the winds are 170, this is not bad. If they're one full, uh, 190, then we're we're pushing the crosswind a little bit, 40 degrees. If we've got a 21 knot crosswind, uh, I use a rule of six because I'm good with numbers, so I. Uh, uh, take uh, 0 to 60 degrees, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and I just divide the wind into six parts. And uh, if it's 10 degrees off, I use one six. If it's 20 degrees, one third, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if it's one uh, seven zero on the wind, that's a uh, 20 degrees, that's one third. So 21 knots, we'd have a seven knot crosswind. Not hard to deal with. However, at 40 degrees, we'd go two thirds, four times. Uh, six or four six rather two-thirds and that would be a 14 knot crosswind which uh, still not too hard to do uh, you know I can still deal with that I was practicing um, in that kind of a wind and uh, didn't have a lot of trouble uh, controlling it had a few bad landings but but that wasn't the winds fault all right um, again from air nav we see the METAR and TAF or FXE uh, which we've already looked at our METARs and TAFs so we now have a pretty good idea of the weather, starting with the overview and the forecast, uh, 
drilling down to the radar and the uh, the Mizars and the TAFs and then finally we've taken a look at our uh, runways and we've thought about what kind of winds we're going to deal with when we get up there. Um, if the wind for some reason, and there, I mean there's three runways here so you're always going to have something you can use that's not going to be more than you know 40 degrees off. Uh, you know if the winds one nine or zero okay that's 40 degrees off here if it flips to two zero zero then we can come in on, on two four and we'll have it 40 degrees off there so so you're never going to get more than uh, that 40 degrees. So that's not true of uh, Tamiami, my home airport, because um, they may activate this given a strong wind. They may bring 1-3 into play. Um, they probably would if you asked for it. And then the um, airport, I close my home airport because this is where I keep my personal airplane, Piper Arrow 2. But this airplane I'm flying, this Luscom tailwheel airplane, is based at a grass strip that has only an east-west runway. And uh, so what would I do if I don't like the wind? Uh, maybe I could land it uh, here on 1-3 and uh, park it, um, you know, at the uh, where I keep my airplane. Just park it, and then this is closer to my home than that grass strip. Yeah, we can always work something out. All right. Um, now the next thing we do, we're going to go ahead and call for our weather briefing. So, WX brief, 1-800-WX brief. It says call mobile, it's not a mobile. Normally you take a piece of paper and you'd be writing stuff down here. Now remember they're, they're going to want this information, so this Welcome is to Lockheed our Martin. sheet Thank here. Alright, see it's listen to my voice. You are at the main menu when you can choose one of the following three. Options. Briefer. What state are you departing from? Florida. Do you want northern Florida? Southern Florida. Florida. I think you said. Yes. Please wait while I connect you with a flight briefer. I jumped it down there. Good morning. Hey, good morning. You doing Southern Florida? Uh, yes, sir. Good deal, good deal. Um, let me ask you, I have a VFR flight planned for uh, uh, maybe 10, 11 o'clock local, like four or five hours from now. Is that too far out to get a standard briefing, or should I do an Outlook briefing? Uh, well, you're kind of in between. Yeah, I know. Uh, the outlooks are usually for six hours or more, and standard briefings are usually best within two hours. But right, let's I do can it. do whatever you like, and then you can kind of update yourself from there. That's what I'll do. I, I, I'm pretty uh, up on the weather anyway. Yeah, let's do a standard briefing. It's a VFR flight. It's aircraft number uh, November 1095 Kilo. It's a 1946 Luscom 8. I think you might have it as L8, Lima 8. Departure airport is going to be Tango Mike Bravo, Tamiami, Florida. Route of flight. Uh, destination airport is um, going to be uh, Pompano Beach. That's Papa Mike Papa. The route is west of the class Bravo over the Everglades. Flight altitude 2,000 feet. Estimated time of departure uh, 1030 local. Uh, so what's that? Uh, 1530. Uh -huh. And Thanks. estimated time of route is 1 hour 0 minutes. Oh yeah, that's true. You are. Yeah, actually, uh, the plane's based at Richards Field, but I'm I'm probably going to fly up to Tamiami to take care of some business up there. Okay. All right. Well, let's see what's uh, what's going on here for you. Um, the air mass for IFR conditions is further north this morning, mm -hmm. so that should not be an issue for you. And uh, and most of the IFR, with the exception of Charlotte County, most of the IFR is really uh, central part of the state and northward anyway this morning. So you don't get into that. Uh, there's no other adverse weather conditions. There's no TFRs for South Florida. The only runway closure is Miami, and that's uh, only for one more hour. This was while the towers closed. Okay. From uh, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. every morning. Which one do they close? Nine or?
2084 degrees, steep point 21. Pressure is 2994. And the other stations in the area, Miami International, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Zopalaga, they're all showing a few clouds, just about 2,500. Okay. But uh, good unrestricted visibility, surface winds are less than 10 knots and out of the uh, southeast to south southeast at present time. And the uh, radar looks good. There's uh, no significant precipitation showing up in the area at the present time. Um, the uh, the forecast. Uh huh. Pompano, Pompano didn't have a terminal forecast. We right. got the same here. Uh, Tamiami starting at eight o'clock and up to noon, thirteen to seventeen Z. Wind one five zero, twelve gust eighteen. Is bleeding more than six and unrestricted with a few clouds at 3,000. And then, uh, you're going to be up in about afternoon time, you think? Or? No, no. Well, yeah, yeah, I'll be uh, coming back. Um, it's a you know lunch and a seminar up there every month. And so about 2 p.m., I'll be coming back. Okay. Well, I just do expect to be uh, windy. And they also said, too, if it, uh, if it Wind shift a little more south southwest. It mm. could be uh, could be a little bit warm today, but just no uh, no significant uh, precipitation or significant weather otherwise. So the front gets down here, but this it from noon to 7 p.m. Uh, wind becoming 170, 15 gust 21, and visibility still unrestricted and 3,000 scattered. Okay. And then for um, for the Fort Lauderdale airports. Uh, pretty much saying the same thing, just a slight difference. They, they uh, for the morning, both stations there. They say from uh, eight o'clock till noon. Uh, also, a few clouds of three thousand. Fact, the cloud cover forecast is exactly the same as what I gave you for it. Yeah, yeah, I noticed just a that. slight variation on the direction of the winds. They show them a little more south. Yeah, southwest. yeah, I saw that one nine zero. Yeah. Otherwise, it's pretty much going to be the same. Okay. The um, general area forecast. South Florida call for mostly clear skies till noon and then 3,000 scattered after that. Uh, your winds are off to four this morning. Uh, the These updated at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, the outlook so for after 10 o'clock is at 19020 at 3,000. Okay, well, I won't be over that. And then. Uh, Besides the runway closure note in here for KMME, also uh, runway 27 left, the happy lights are out. Yeah. All I'm looking the for in the uh, notams, I don't need any of the instruments. All I'm really interested okay. in is a if there is any runway closures up at Pompano, because that might impact no, my no, ability to no, land. Yeah. Only thing I've got for Pompano is just a note showing their hours of operation for the tower. Okay, great. It's, uh, it's just a 1300 to 0200 Zulu daily. And uh, that's all that I have there for them. Okay. If nothing else. Um, the only other place I've got any runway closures is just Miami. Mm -hmm. All right. And Sounds good. Probably North Perry. There's a few other other airports that get uh, yeah. runway closures, yeah. but nothing there's significant for confident. Good deal. And I don't see anything else except just in, in instrument information that won't uh, affect you. Right. Okay. Super. All right. Yeah, if you want to check, maybe I um, just check after nine. Maybe yeah. get an update on the terminal forecast and new winds will have to be up by then. But other than it being a little bit breezy for you, otherwise that probably should look okay. Sounds great. Thanks a lot. All right, sir. Thank you. We appreciate color reports. Flight watch is one two two one zero. Have a good day. We'll do. Same to you. Bye bye. Thanks. Take care. Okay. So you see, um, unfortunately. Um, the software I'm using to record the sessions uh, times out for really long. If you go too long, let's say 20, 30 minutes, it says, you know, your file's too big. Um, okay, so that's why I, to I told you first to uh, Google uh, uh, Standard Briefing FSS and bring come up to this page because what you're going to see here is, number one, the type of information he wants and you give him this information you sound very professional you'll get a professional briefing um, 
and then you'll see exactly they follow a standard format. One thing about all this FAA stuff is air traffic controllers and these flight service people, is they, file, they all follow the same format of everything. When you get a clearance from a, from a controller, it's going to follow a certain pre, uh, format. You know, it's, um, yeah, I forget there's a little acronym you use, but the briefings, always the same thing. First, you're going to start with adverse conditions. As he's going to tell you if you shouldn't do this, you know, and BFR not recommended. That's that's the most important thing, you know. What's bad out there? Is VFR flight uh, not recommended? You should listen to him if he says it's not recommended. Okay, really, you don't ne need to mess with that. Um, go another day. Then he gives you a synopsis of the uh, weather picture. And for me, since I'm already conversant with the TAFs and the METARs, and I'm already looking and picking up the radar, et cetera, et cetera, I've already got the rest of the information. I can pick up the winds aloft from the uh, from the aviation weather site. So this is kind of the most valuable thing for me. And I might even do an abbreviated briefing and just ask for um, NOTAMs, TFRs, and a synopsis. Uh, because I know the current conditions. I know the en route forecast, destination forecast. He was just reading off the tasks. He had the same, when he said the wind was a little bit southerly, that's because it said it was 19 or 0 instead of 170. Uh, the exact same thing I saw. Winds aloft, we can get. Notums, you can get them, but it's easier to let him give them to you because they, they show up on his screen uh, based on your route and destination airport and everything. So the only trouble with the notums is you kind of want to. Um, control that a little bit or else he'll just go off into every runway closure not runway closure what you want every taxiway closure every you know hundred foot crane in the vicinity uh, every ILS issue that you're not even interested in as a VFR pilot so you can just basically tell him that uh, the only notums you're interested in are whatever you're interested in you know are there any uh, you know uh, obstructions with lights out if you're flying at night or are there any um, runway closures that might impact your ability to make crosswind landing. All right, that's uh, that's basically it. So what do we know? We know that um, the weather is is okay. We already know it's going to be warm. Um, so we're used to that in Florida. Uh, we know that we're going to be dealing with a crosswind, and we know that when we come back, if we cannot land Tamiami one three. Uh, even if we do land Tamiami 13, we could have your winds are 190, 0 is 60 degrees. That's full on crosswind. You figure full on crosswind. So if you've got 15 gusting 20, that's a full crosswind, 15 gusting 20. So there's no way to get into Tamiami if the winds are right out of the south. There's no way to get into Tamiami without dealing with a full on crosswind so if you're not com comfortable with crosswinds you shouldn't make this flight because you won't be able to get back home um, so personally I don't have a lot of trouble with crosswinds um, not tuning my own horn but I, I do practice them and um, and your your fallback would be to get the airplane on the ground your fallback would be uh, X51 which has a north-south runway you land it you park it you call a friend to come get you whatever you need to do, take a cab, whatever you need to do, you do it, and you um, leave the heroics out of the picture. So that's basically it. Um, we're now ready to, uh, we've got our flight plan done, we've got our briefing done, and the only other thing we need to do is uh, a little closer, about an hour before we leave, we'll just pick up a, a quick update briefing, just make sure nothing's changed uh, terribly, and we're good to go. So that is all.